Hirsprung's disease or congenital agganglionic megacolon. It is observed in neonates. It is the congenital absence of parasympathetic ganglion nerve cells from within the muscle wall of the intestinal tract, usually at the distal end of the colon. So in this picture you can see that distal end of the colon is distended. Okay, so that is congenital megacolon. Here the colon will be distended and there will not be functioning of peristalsis. So there will be blockage of fecal matter in this area. So that's why it is known as congenital agganglionic megacolon or Hirsprung's disease. We can see the etiology and pathophysiology. Mainly the etiology is genetic in origin, uh, more, mostly autosomal disease. Uh, we already dealt that is Hirsprung's disease results from absence of parasympathetic ganglion cells. Okay, so the ganglion cells which are derived from the neural crest. These ganglion cells arrive in the proximal colon by 8 weeks of gestational age and in the rectum by 12 weeks of gestational age. The arrest in this migration leads to a ganglionic segment. So that's why the Hirsprung disease occurs. So what happens when a ganglionic segment is occurs that we can see. So due, due to absence of this ganglionic cells, there is lack of peristalsis in the affected portion that leads to functional obstruction of colon so that there will be accumulation of gas and feces proximal to this defect so that there will be enlargement of colon occurs that's why we are saying it's a mega colon so this is pathophysiology due to the absence of ganglionic nerve cells there will not be peristalsis that's why there will be accumulation of fecal and gaseous matter in the colon and that leads to appearance of a mega colon or enlargement of a colon. When we considering regarding the clinical features of the condition, I already said that it is occurs in neonates, especially in neonates, infants and old age, uh, old age not childhood childhood period. So in neonates especially the failure to pass meconium is a most important feature. So failure to pass meconium within 24 hours is a uh, clinical uh, significance of uh, this uh, Hirsprung's disease. Okay then there will be abdominal distension bile stained vomitus that is bilis vomiting. It's common in Hirsprung's then Features of shock will be there, then episodes of diarrhea and constipation. Hirsprung's disease patient, uh, here there will be episodes of diarrhea, then constipation occurs. So, uh, but in case of older children, constipation with abdominal distension is more common. Then when stool is passed, it will be foul smelling, then uh, it will be uh, liquid or liquid inconsistency or ribbon like stool okay then uh, the most of the child will be malnourished and anemic lethargic so this is this is the clinical features then uh, in palpation uh, you can easily palpate the distended abdomen especially the uh, distended colon you can easily palpate so that is the palpation findings So, in clinical features, you don't forget failure to pass meconium, then bilis vomiting, then swelling in the abdomen, then constipation, platelets, diarrhea, and failure to gain weight, then severe fatigue. Regarding the diagnostic evaluation, uh, the as usual history physical examination in the history, you have to assess the history of meconium passage. Within 24 hours to 48 hours is uh, done or not. If baby passed meconium or not.
ഓക്കെ ദൻ റെക്റ്റൽ എക്സാമിനേഷൻ പാൽപേഷ്യൻ ആനോറക്റ്റൽ മാനോമെട്രി ബേരിയം മെനിമ റെക്റ്റൽ ബയോപ്സി ഓൾ ദിസ് ക്യാൻ ബി ഡൺ ദെൻ ആനോറക്റ്റൽ മാനോമെട്രി മെയ് മെയിൻലി ടു ഐഡൻറ്റിഫൈ ഇസ് ദ സ്പിങ്ഷർ പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ദി ഫെയിലിയർ ടു ഇൻ ഫെയിലിയർ ഓഫ് ദ ഇൻഡസ്റ്റൈനൽ സ്പിങ്ഷർ ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ബി ഐഡൻറ്റിഫൈഡ് ബൈ ആനോറക്റ്റൽ മാനോമെട്രി ദെൻ ബേരിയം എനിമ ദാറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ബി ഐഡൻറ്റിഫ് ഹിയർ Uh, delayed passage of uh, barium can be identified then distended uh, bowel also can be observed and then x-ray uh, we can see the gaseous or uh, distension of the bowel then uh, when we are saying regarding the confirmatory test of hirschsprung's disease it is rectal biopsy the rectal biopsy is helpful to identify the absence of ganglionic nerve cells so that's why confirmatory test is rectal biopsy and then uh, regarding the management actually there is no medical management for this patient we can give the isotonic enema low residue diet all those things as a management but exact management is surgical management especially the person can be done colostomy or ileostomy for fecal diversion otherwise definitely surgeries are swenson procedure dehamel procedure and so a procedure so these all are the procedure is important in the exam purpose especially for the pscs uh, the principles of swenson pull through procedure is the proximal ganglionated bowel is grasped through an incision in the prolapsed recto sigmoid stump and the ganglionated bowel is then sewn to the anus so firstly what we are doing is proximal ganglionated bowel is grasped through an incision then ganglionated bowel is sewn to anus that is happening in swenson procedure next procedure is the duhamel procedure in duhamel procedure the ganglionated bowel is delivered through an incision in the posterior aspect of native ganglionic rectum and sewn to anus the septum between the ganglionated pull through colon and the ganglionic native rectum is then divided using a stapler so what we are doing in duhamel technique here what we are doing is ganglionated bowel is delivered through an incision in the posterior aspect of native ganglionic rectum then sewn to anus the septum is then is between the ganglionated pull through colon and the ganglionic native rectum is then divided using a stapler then in soyo procedure uh, here Uh, there is a extra mucosal dissection of the rectum after circumferential incision of the rectal mucosa the ganglionated colon is pulled through the ganglionic rectal cuff and the colo anal anastomosis is occurs here so in soyo procedure we are doing the colo anal anastomosis after the excision of the extra mucosal dissection of the rectum then we are doing the excision then colonal anastomosis is done the main complications you can see in uh, hirschsprung disease is colitis intestinal obstruction growth retardation then perforation peritonitis septicemia all these features can be uh, seen as a complication then uh, pre and post operative complication especially the anesthetic complication and uh, hemorrhage that occur is intraoperatively then post operatively then uh, usually anastomotic leak or stenosis constipation or fecal incontinence then diarrhea and enterocolitis also can be occur so these are all the condition regarding the hirschsprung's disease i hope you understood thank you